Chapter 1 Joshua opened his eyes wide open, jarred awake by the shrill screams and cold, clammy hands shackled around his throat. Edgar was wide-eyed with matter of the hair, leaning over him and trying to choke the light from him. Where is it? Where are you hiding it? Edgar shouted. What did you do with the water? Edgar, get the fuck off of me. Joshua grabbed the older man's bony shoulders and tossed him on the floor, like a rag doll. What's gotten into you? he grasped, rubbing his neck. I knew you took all the water. You stole it, Edgar yelled. Joshua rested his hand on Edgar's back and drew himself close to the sulken creature that had once been his trusted friend. Listen to me. I didn't take anyone's water. There's no water to steal. Now go home and get some sleep. Joshua pulled Edgar to his feet and shoved him out of his filthy run-down shack in a barren waste, desert wasteland. Edgar stumbled and fell face first in the dirt, groaned, but made no attempt to get up. Julia, having heard the commotion, ran toward Joshua, a short, attractive Latina woman named Maria. Her eight-year-old daughter, Palio, were close behind him. What's going on? Julia said. Are you okay, Edgar? His Hispanic accent seemed thicker, but he was excited or confused. I woke up, woke up to him choking me. He thinks I'm keeping water from everyone, Joshua replied. The crazy old man. What the hell? What the hell is wrong with you? Jolio barked. He's feeling dehydrated and overheated. He's not in his right mind. His hands are cold. He's probably hypothermic. At this point, his body's shutting down, Joshua said. Can't be. We do anything for him, said Tars Maria. I put several more cans on the ground, laid a plastic tarp over them. Oh, well, but I got very little water. I even tried draining a few cacti. It all came out was good was, was a gooey substance. With no water source of miles. Even if it was, you can't walk far in its heat without fluids. It can't last more than a couple of hours, Joshua replied. Do you think anyone could spare some of their water rations? Maria said. Julio snorted. We don't even have enough water for ourselves. We share water with everyone. You risk your own life. They left us in a shithole to die. It's working. Stop talking like that. You're going to scare Palio, Miriam hissed. She should be scared, and so should you. Why do you think they dumped us in the middle of nowhere? They've taken everything from us, our cars, our houses, our money. They gave us no way to survive. They've got no use for us anymore. The purifiers haven't been here in weeks, Jenny retorted. They need Judo's help, because he knows more than any of them about the wind turbines Maria recounted. That, then why the hell aren't they asking for his help anymore? Julia replied. Enough already, Joshua said. May I take Edgar to see Maria's place and see if she can help him? Maria pulled Edgar to his feet and she and Pedro helped him to Zia Maria's. I'll be okay, Edgar. Zia Maria will. You'll be okay, Edgar. Zia Maria will make you better. Pedro patted his arm. Eager, Edgar. Glanced at her and stared off into space. Just pin you somewhere else. Someone better. That's what I do when I feel sick or depressed. She put her arm around him. What do you think that Zena is going to be able to do for him? Do you know to know? She used to be a nurse, just replied. That doesn't do much good out here. Julia, do you have to make every situation worse? Josh snapped. He didn't mind your pessimism most of the time, but today he is grating on him. I'm sorry, man. Don't, I just don't think the purifiers are coming back again. I don't, I'm not sure how we survive, Julia sighed. I know, I've tried to think of a plan. But for now, everyone needs to stay indoors. We're sweating in the sun all day. We end up like Edgar. Joshua rests his hand. Julia's much shoulder. All right, bro, Julia nodded. Joshua went back to his shack and drank the last his water ration of the day. His water was stuffy and miserable inside. Little battery powered lamps don't help much. He glanced at a tall, skinny, unkept man in the mirror and didn't recognise himself. His chisel dirt smudged cheeks looked like that. His tatty his filthy tatty clothes hung on him. At twenty eight years old, he never ever imagined that this would be his life. He was once a consultant for a large clean energy firm, proud husband, expectant father, and as owner of a tiny Owner of a beautiful three bedroom house in Scottsdale. 
No, he lived in a tiny two bedroom two room hut, didn't he? You keep the debris out of the dust storm. The lovely straw mattress made him yearn for his old sleeper bed. He tried to remember a time when people wouldn't have killed any other another for something as basic water. Memories of being on a high school swim team. Fishing trips for friends now seem like a myth, as if some if nothing else existed but arid and habitable land. Only cacti, rocks, shrubbery, sagago, and other plants surrounded them. Mountains stood tall and proud of a distance. They seemed much closer than they really were. Houses and paved roads were vaguer memories. The close neighbor corpses and cluster shacks several miles away. He felt like they'd been wiped off the face of the planet. He'd been wiped off the face of the planet, never to see civilization again. It's lonely, helpless feeling. How the hell did it come down to this? he wondered. It all started with a nuclear war in 2014. Surprise enemy attack destroyed parts of the southwest and scourged thousands of miles of land. The lack of rainfall made it even, made it even more difficult to build and recover. Most of the country didn't have it. It hadn't seen a drop for months. Some barely a million started draining lakes and selling the water to cities, experiencing droughts. Multi-million dollar companies, politicians saw a chance to make money around with the idea. Purchased rights to all bodies of water across the country made them accessible to the public. Lakes and rivers are surrounded by razor sharp barbed wire fences. To feed the country's water supply to sell it back to the public, particular prices, laws of baths are banned citizens, collecting rainwater, water exploited to the public was blocked, and the ocean shorelines were patrolled by armed guards. Joshua shook his head. Low middle classes went bankrupt, and lives were consumed with poverty, sickness and death. The national crime rate reached to an all-time high. The border barons formed an army of brutes called purifiers. Joshua clenched his fists at the thought of them. Problems stricken, including himself, were forced out their home by purifiers and sent to live in shacks outside town. Shacks few residents were deemed useful. In any way, purifiers wanted to bring them food, water, and some basic amenities. They usually visited Joshua's group every few weeks because of its expertise on wind turbines. Advice was needed so the banks would build more termites to pump water. On several cases, it's taken construction sites to assist them. Citizens were well warned then, but now food and water supply was running low. There's no way to know when or if the purifiers would show up again. He sat on a wicker stall and ran his fingers through his cool brown hair. He had to think of a way to get food and water. He got up and paced the floor, but only the, the neck. The same tired ideas came to mind. He never wanted to give up, but Edgar's predicament made everything even more grimmer. His head began to throb. He sat on the dirty floor and leaned against the wooden bed frame. He couldn't bring himself to tell anyone. It wasn't it wasn't a plan. The group looked to him for guidance. He hated it the thought of letting them down. He couldn't believe that one only, there were only eight of them left. Out of twenty five, they looked, they were like family now. Julia was far the strongest of possibly reason why they were still alive. He taught them how to live off the land, catch food to obvious. It was obvious he spent most of his life fending for himself. Joshua couldn't have asked for a more loyal friend. Julia seemed to think of him a big brother. He always wanted Joshua for Julia. Seemed lost and searching for a place to belong. See, Maria was the caretaker, the suffocant mother. Found if he put others before himself, some his own peril, finds compassion. New bone bound, she inspected every living creature around her. She's a vegetarian, or actually made it clear, she only yet made for survival. In the beginning, she was determined to keep one alive, half climate, even for her plan, suicide of land. Joshua knew it hurt, her soul to watch her group dwindle, became more, withdraw- became more withdrawn, inverted with each person they lost. Joshua couldn't, didn't think Dane 
in the sky line will survive the waste sense. But if I would enroll, energetic appearance is demon gentle demeanors were deceiving, and much stronger, more capable than he looked. Bain was custom hard work, did more than his fair share. Carla tried to stay positive and offer the garrison, even the darkest of times. They are pleasant down to earth, and easy to get along with. They made an adorable doting couple, sometimes a little nose I think. They said them are good, but their fights are passionate as well as their make-up sex. Having their heart closest to them meant Joshua was sick, stuck listening to it. Joshua could tell that Skylar wanted children. He volunteered to look after Paolo any time Maria was busy. Joshua thought the world of Maria. He considered her the ideal woman, tough, pretty, smart, Gary. He was also fine, led good, and educated. He always behaved like a lady. He instilled the same values in her daughter, Paolo, was the centre of her universe, and Maria sought to raise her right. Even when things seemed hopeless, Maria managed to be brave. Managed to be brave for her. No one ever saw her cry. Pioneer took her over her in many ways. She was intelligent for a child. He never had a chance to go to school. She best the grace and charm of the little princess. She was there happy. That might be most of the time. Maria tried to shelter her from reality, the situation as best as she could. Edgar tested Joshua and Jonah's patience, but gave a lot of he gave a lot of sound advice, despite being stubborn, orderly, and sudden his ways. He liked to give orders which didn't sit well with anyone. He clashed the most with all judo, but who did not like authority? I don't know why you think I'm full of great ideas. I couldn't help the other for something. Joshua called in the bed, closed his eyes and drifted to sleep. No, he sat up in his bed, panting and sweating. His heart pounded like a drum. He looked around the room, but everyone, everything was dark and quiet. It must have been another dream. He wiped the sweat from his brow. He grabbed his flashlight and headed for the outhouse. Stephen Beauty is finally awake, Paolo grinned. He stood over a little small patch of plants, plucking them from the ground and tossing them. The plate basket Maria shined, flashlight for her. What are you doing out so late? said asked Joshua. See, see her and Maria. Said certain plants would retain a lot of moisture. It could help Edgar. Edgar, Pyro replied. It hasn't rained a while for a while though. Some of these plants have spent extensive roots that could hold much for a long time. There may not be much left, but it's worth a shot. We've got to do something, Maria said. You're right. How's he doing? But he hanging on. See, so Maria gave him half of her daily world ration. But it didn't help much, Maria replied. Damn it. What do about doing that? Joshua muttered. You know she's not going to listen. She's a nurse for twenty years, a volunteered to main society. The woman spent her life trying to save everyone and everything. That's who she is, Maria replied. Mama is going to be enough. Priya Polola Priella Polola held out a basket full, half full of greenery. I think so. Take it to Zia Maria and see what she says, Polo. Ran to Zia Maria's hat. You're sure you're sure it's you sure, you sure Maybe you should eat a plant. I think there's a couple left. Maria shined a flashlight in him. No way, they upset my stomach. It was just another dream, I guess, Joshua sat round and stared at the night sky. Stars shone like jewels, the moon was full of ye- and yellow. You don't remember your dream? Maria sat beside him. No, I'm glad. I never the kind I want to recall. How long do you think will last? Oh, the world of the Russians are gone, she stared at him. The question caught him off guard, shifted his spot and looked away. I just need a formal plan, he muttered. You don't have the vaguest idea what to do. I see it in your eyes. He leaned back and rested his head on rock. A deep, sigh, a deep sigh escaped him. Not your fault, she lay beside him. We trapped his area. We saw all of it. We, tra- we trapped his area. Resources, what else could we do? Every day is an uphill battle just to make it to the next. There's got to be more to life than this. Maybe we'll be rewarded in the afterlife. All this job struggles. I may be so. Right now I'm worried about this one. If there's a way to make it through, if you will figure out. It's not all up to you. We're meeting about it tomorrow. Make yourself improves. You've had his leg. That's a good idea. Don't stand that all. Don't stay all night thinking about it. He got up, kissed his cheek, and walked to Zambia. Zambia. It really is hot.